than a century ago, Jim Beckworth was kidnapped by the Crow Indians and by a twist of fate, rose to chief of the Crow Nation. Well, Beckworth is back in a new biography that reads like a thriller, written by a man who grew up on the legends of the American West. I suppose as a boy in these hills wandering around and always sort of feeling the presence of the old miners or their ghosts, uh, down canyon, two miles, there's a deserted uh, mine with uh, an old bunkhouse and so forth. Upstream, two or three miles, find a few shards of uh, doby and so forth uh, in the grass, old fireplaces standing out in the woods, and wandering about in the, in the Sierras, and, uh, and knowing, of course, of Beckworth's Pass, and Sierra Valley was originally called Beckworth Valley. Jim Beckworth himself couldn't have picked a writer more suited to tell his story than Bill Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss grew up in this spot called Woodpecker Ravine. It's outside Grass Valley. He published several volumes of poetry and taught at a few colleges before he began the years of research that resulted in Medicine Calf. It's the story of a man whose parents were almost as unconventional as he became. Uh, old Jennings Beckworth was a first family of Virginia aristocrat. Uh, a bit of a rebel, apparently. In fact, very much of a rebel. Fell in love with a... Uh, a uh, slave girl on the Misco plantation, so far as anyone uh, was able to tell, bought her and then shocked everybody by saying he intended to marry her. This just wasn't done in the, in the late 1700s in Virginia, of course. Jim Beckworth came west in the early 1800s as a trapper. His friends told a group of Crow Indians as a joke that Beckworth had been born a Crow and kidnapped by the Blackfeet as an infant. No one knew how seriously the Crow took the story. Beckworth and Bridger were out on a little uh, trapping venture. Uh, Beckworth went up one canyon, Bridger up the other. The crows came down, snatched Beckworth, tied him up, and took him back to their village. And all the, the older women came out to inspect him. He was stripped naked, and they inspected him to see if they could recognize anything about him. And uh, uh, the wife of uh, Chief Big Bull said, if he is my son, he will have a mole on the lid of his left eyelid. Uh, so she looked, and he did, and on that basis, he was accepted into their family. He intended to stay, really, for a, a short while, figuring that the Indians supposing him one of them, they would not bother him, he wouldn't have to worry about losing his scalp and so forth. But uh, their way of life, their honesty, uh, the fact that they would give him honor for many of the same things that the other trappers uh, condemned him for. Rash action, uh, foolhardy bravery, and so forth. And uh, immediately he uh, was presented with a wife, and before long he was one of them. And he stayed with them and went on to become the head chief of the, uh, of the Mountain Crows. For me, the, the opening of the American West against the backdrop of that huge continent uh, the great rivers, the, 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 the mountains, the Indian peoples, uh, the, the greatest warriors that ever lived by, uh, by all odds were the Plains Indians people and so forth. We've sentimentalized them. We've again and again refused to see them for what they were. Uh, names like Bridger and Beckworth and Sublette, one may recognize them but have no specific information about them. Uh, Peter Lassen uh, and on and on, Sutter down here in, in Sacramento. Uh, Jed Smith crossing the mountains, all of those things were uh, actions of a, an astounding uh, character, man pitted against the, the very formidable forces of, of nature and the vastness of the continent. Hotchkiss wife, Judith Shears, is herself a writer. Together, they've built a cabin in this remote spot with no electricity and only the stream for running water. For entertainment, they have a pet turkey named Wally. It's a life that, like Hotchkiss poetry, celebrates their surroundings. We build a fire, cook our meal and eat, then talk and drink wine as darkness pours up from the stones and stars appear in a long band at sky center. And in flickering shadows of firelight, we come together. Our bodies sense the wild earth, and we fall asleep, our bodies mingled in sleep, the sound of the rushing water and the cry of an owl.